Here we go, double flash for Imagine, P250, flash and smoke for Hats. We've seen so many of these P250 and, and uh, flash strategies as well. Smoke goes straight out towards Sandwich at the start, and it's going to be the contact towards Inner. Nope. Down the SL goes Alistair. They're just going to make sure nobody can hear their footsteps or any of their movements in the mi in uh, into SL at that point. Smoke goes out towards Ivy as well, and they have broken the glass and taken control of SL. But down into Inners, FNS, you've got to hit some headshots here. Oh, he's ducking the ladder, and as a result, it means that he does go down to 15. No one's in your grenades for both sides. Liaz, it's actually Hats. Hats and Liaz, you can't do that with a Glock, Liaz. That's illegal. And now it's all suddenly down to a 2 on 5. FNS has been dinked down already. Liaz still on the hunt. Just pushing forward. Automatic, though, will be able to finally stop his killing spree, but he's the final man that's standing for Cloud9 with the USP. The kit is just slightly close to him to his left, but so many members of Order looking on the hunt for him, and eventually there's just too many members. But what do you say to that? Leon's and Hat starting off in vintage form. Love the pistol there from Order. Just the smoke over towards Sandwich. Cloud9, if, if they want to get any info on who's in Tcon, they've got to stare down that green train line, and even if they do that they can't be sure that nobody's actually close to the right side from order they even take control of the sl and break the windows to make sure that cloud nine can't hear any of their movements throw out that smoke towards the back of green train cloud nine they're not sure if there's people in tcon coming down sl and splitting them or if they're coming towards inners so they play retake inners but Cla order runs up in their face and doesn't let them out of that ct connector Absolutely not. And now they're out straight through SL as well as T-Connector. Liaz does go down though, and the CZ's doing a lot of work right now. Tarek pushing up. Tarek actually finding the second kill. Hats finally reacting. That was a little bit late because that means that now suddenly Cloud9 have managed to make the pistols work out with FNS pushing in as Hats decides not to switch out. Decides to maintain radio silent. And is able to identify Automatic's position. Automatic going to be just though. picking up. Yeah, FNS going to be on the long rotate around. Hats still prowling around to see if he can pick off Automatic to force it into a one-on-one. -on -one. Hats will be able to do so. Three kills for him so far. Knows that FNS was at SL, but he's been able to transition into T-Connector. And Hats doesn't know where the CT is rotated around. He's checking all these lines, but not the right ones. 55 seconds still left on the timer. He's got time to work with. He's going to move to the B-bomb site. He spots out FNS. Tag down to 51, though. Still HP effective. Going to go for the plant. And Cloud9, at the very least, have done a lot of damage and FNS a chance to win this. But he's got an AK FNS and he's got a flash as well. Hats on the UMP, two flashes to work with and it's just going to be a matter of timing here, Kev. It is going to be who looks away at the wrong time, but Hats, he's pretty sure that it's going to be FNS coming in from one angle and FNS, he'll come out on top of the AK-47 to Clown 9, giving a bit of revenge for Order as Order trying to bust out of SLNT connector fast. Do not take down Tarek. And FNS just fast on the flank means that Cloud9 bring one back. I mean, Cloud9, I don't know if they'll have done any of the homework on order, but it, against their, against Legacy in their match, um, they did a lot of this straight out T-Connector, straight down SL. Didn't really work out too well against Legacy because their utility usage was so on point. But there's going to be a buy straight into this one. Hats earning a lot of money from that UMP. He's going to have AK full nades. That bomb plant is going to allow a lot of CZs and grenades. And we're going to see what the approach is here from order. They have enough utility to do anything, but they need to get these pistols up close to the Cloud9 rifles. And it looks like it's going to be once more straight down SL, straight in through T-Connector. Out comes a flashbang. Hats first up on the contact, on the entry. Knows that Tarek's been boosting up Skadoodle with the AWP. Doesn't have armor. This flashbang is going to be ruining Skadoodle as well as Tarek's day. And Alistair coming out with a Tech-9. Gets the first one, but Rush is still alive at the green train. Leaz is going to go down, but imagine making the CZ work so far. But the picks now slowly starting to swing back in the favor until Hats. They all line up for Hats. They all go down. Order. They force back up into this. And Cloud9, their economy is reset. I was about to just say last round, Cloud9 finally getting one of the breaks that Order's had, just forcing that one up and winning a round that they weren't meant to. Order was getting them all last round, but Order turns it back around, straight buying into the last round, and Hats cleaning it up with the 3K just at the end there. Rush almost thought it was all going to be over when he sprayed the planter through the smoke on that outside bomb site, but does resolve and Hats coming down SL, the hero of the round is going to allow Order to continue their reign of dominance on this T side so far. I mean, it's not over just yet. Order did lose against a force by in the previous round in Cloud9. Notice that the economy of both sides are weak, are going to be investing in this one. Tarek's got the scouts, doodle just with the CZ, but they've invested a lot in this. Everything's just slow to a crawl for now. 
as Cloud9 just probing for any information, any opportunities off the T side. Damage done to Liaz. They now know that a scout's on the play, so it's most likely going to be a force buy. Once again, we're going to be seeing action out on the A bomb site. Tarek just being an absolute nuisance on the scout. T's busting out. Imagine taking a lot of damage, but still able to get the bomb plant down. Oh, Sicko needs to be careful. Tarek missing a lot of these shots. Now finally starting to connect some damage. Skadoodle will finish up the job. And needs, oh, this is Order. Order just collapsing all around. The damage now hurting them. It's up to Hats really to find this kill with the UMP, but he's going to be running out of bullets and collapsed upon. All down to Alistair. Now they know where he is, trying to charge out with the UMP. This is, once again, another force by working in the favor of Cloud9. There is no chance Alistair can deny the defuse. It's just back and forth right now in this game. Cloud9, they do well to bring it back. Yeah, and this is going to be a pretty difficult decision for Order to make at this point. Two of their players can afford AK and armor, but if they just take the save, they only give Cloud9 one round. They can try and chip away at their economy, and then they could afford orbs on Sicko and all the utility they want, but they don't want to let go of the control they have on this game. Despite three Cloud9 players staying alive last round, their economy not looking too great. They've had to buy up plenty of rifles into this round. The scout over onto the Skadoodle. FNS is going to have to do his best with the UMP but plenty of util to stop any fast plays and it's straight out towards Innis here. Tarek going to drop the incendiary. That's going to hold the push, but not for Sicko. Yeah, Hats drops the smoke grenade and they're pushing fast beyond, but there's no one else beyond there in Sicko. Now the rotation comes out from the rest of the CTs. They do push through the incendiary grenade. It's all down to Liaz by himself. Three HP. So order, try faking out over on the A bomb site. It's not going to work out. And finally, some semblance of order, no pun intended, has been restored to this game. But Cloud9 are finally able to string two rounds together. Order finally have to go on the eco. And I don't know how much I agree with that force into that last round, Kevin. It's really going to stop Sicko picking up the orb at any point in the near future. They may be able to save this one and still have a pretty decent buy next one. Maybe like 4.4k, 4.5k on some of their players if they don't buy up too many pistols. Only two P250s across the board. So with that three loss bonus, you know, you're getting a fair bit of money at that point. Maybe around 4k. But... Uh, Water just going to slow this one down now. Automatic, he's waiting for the flash, but he's going to line up three order players quickly here. Yeah, he's taking a lot of damage, and he has to just go out swinging, but there's just too many members right now. Rush was there, ready for the trade. But finally, then Skadoodle with the orb decides to pick off Alistair. Still trying to prone this opportunity on Sicko as Rush is just locking down two corridors by himself. It's all down to imagine with the Glock. So much better done from Cloud9, especially on Rush just locking down that A-bomb site. Order now is trying to scramble for ideas. I don't think this is good for them as well. Very early on, they've been unable to get access into the A-bomb site for multiple rounds now. Weren't able to get that plant down either, but like I said, 4 to 4.6k across the board from the order side. That's going to allow them plenty of grenades with those AKs. Maybe not all of the grenades that you might need for every single strategy in the book. Or more of a slower round, they're going to have to more rely on the flashes to take control of certain areas of the map. And just some of their players getting in there and denying aggression, gathering map control. SL is going to be pretty hard to take unless you're just getting down there with the brute aggression. And some of these Cloud9 players are pretty hard to stop when they're trying to get into that SL, but doesn't look like they're too interested in that just yet. Rush might be pushing up there in just a moment here. And deep smoke into CT. It's looking like uh, order moving quickly into this B execute that we've seen them do a couple of times. The smoke onto the close low ramp and the two smoke fight. This spam from Tarek will actually alert Rush that there's somebody above SL. It's going to give them quite a lot of information but they haven't rotated anyone with this information. It's just down to FNS. He has utility, but he hasn't dropped it. No one's rotated out. The flashbangs come forward. FNS might drop this incendiary grenade a little bit too late. They now know there's one near Pop Dog, but they're pushing fast beyond him. Hat, he hasn't looked away at the right time. And Alistair still stuck behind the smoke grenade. No one has checked FNS's position. FNS could have gone absolutely huge with the third kill. Finally, imagine stops the killing spree. Sicko trying to get close to the smoke grenade. They're not going to expect another one here, but Rush is going to be watching as the smoke fades away. It's now down to a two on four. Cloud9 have been doing very, very well locking down these B-bomb site. And it is all down to Liaz. Nothing he can really do right now. He's locked out of it. He knows it. He's going to back out as the defuse goes forward. Cloud9 locking down A, locking down B. Order just trying to go for fast. All men out. It's not working right now. They're too one-dimensional at this point, Kev. They're really trying to force their foot in the door. But every single time, Cloud9 shuts it successfully. And their money starts to build up more and more. 10k on two of their players. Rush is just going to even out his money a little bit more by buying up the grenades that he needs. But you know what? 
Cloud9, they've got a good start to their economy, and that's one of the dangerous things that you may have to deal with on train. Resetting the CT economy can be key to stringing together a lot of T rounds on this map, but unfortunately, that's not going to be an option for Order. They're going to have to grind their way back into this one. Yeah, I mean, for Order as well, they don't have much utility, and this is going to be so problematic trying to take bomb sites with no utility. Absolutely. Hats. Just an inch away from Rush in this SL. We've seen Rush do so much work from this position in the past. Him and Tarek are so effective on this front area of the train yard. But here, as soon as the smoke fades, I believe we'll see order executing out. We've got two above SL right now. Raided, or just a single one above SL. Was thinking about dropping down, but Hats is going to just break away from that iron here. But Automatics actually picked up the AWP as well. And that means that he's able to shut down one prong of the attack. He's now looking at Ivy. Headshot onto Liaz. Imagine not in position to trade. Automatic still looking at the left-hand side, but he will back out now. Imagine will be pushing up slowly, but it's going to be very dangerous because there's actually two inside SL right now. They've actually exchanged position. Hans is over here at the upper position. Has that incendiary grenade flung at his head. Manages to get down, but he doesn't have the bomb. Imagine goes down to Automatic. And now it's a one on five. Bomb not in his control. They don't know where Hats is, but there is no chance for Hats winning this, surely. He can do some damage, but that's about it. Now there's the first pick. Now Cloud9 going to be scrambling around, making sure they're reinforcing all the positions they need to. Only three ways that he could come out right now. It's going to be CT, Connector, and Inners. And you can see already they're flooding in. They don't want Hats keeping this AK 47. Cloud9 have enough to purchase in the next round. They do indeed, and I mean, Order's probably going to have to take the L here and just save in this next round, giving Cloud9 their seventh spot. You know, Order, it's going to be pretty hard to put their finger on what they actually want to do to start securing some of these T rounds. I feel like they really cannot be results oriented in their thinking here, Kev. Hats saving this gun is going to force them into another AK buy with really lackluster utility, and I feel like for Cloud9 at least, their weak point at this point is either got to be Ivy where you can sort of try to get Skadoodle um, into a tough spot, or you got to go towards Inners because FNS is playing solo there, and although it didn't work out for you in the other round, I feel like it's just uh, down to a bad case of timing. You know, he ended up in the right position, drops his incendiary, Flash comes out at the right time, and he gets himself a 2K, but a couple of different... Uh, things happen in that round and someone looks a different way or a couple extra seconds for order and they definitely could have had a successful hit on that inner bomb site. Yeah, Alistair trying to sneak his way through the edge of the smoke grenade, but Tarek's also at uppers as well to deflect another arm of the attack from order. And they still have a few AKs as well as the Eagles to work with, but now, right now, Cloud9 now, Cloud making it look absolutely too easy. And you were talking about Ivy maybe being easy. Well, Automatic's there with the AWP now. And he's locking down not only Ivy, but he's also making sure the corridor of Olaf and Green Train are clear so the rest of the rifles in Cloud9 can maneuver according to their heart's content. So a minute left in this round. Order of who lost three members. Did some damage but didn't get any kills. Still looking for these opportunities though. You can't count them out just yet. But Cloud9 have done very well to come back into train. It was a very lopsided start at the beginning. But now some semblance of natural order restored. Sicko's managed to get himself an AK from one of his dead teammates. That will be Hats. Rush definitely could have died there to Liaz, but luckily gets the better of him. Vertical flick not able to be converted there. And then once the Deagle spread starts to kick in after that first bullet, you never know whether you're getting that one or not, Kev. 20 HP for two of these Cloud9 players are the only kind of players that Sicko's got main, uh, a main shot at actually taking down at this point unless he catches FNS off. Not likely. FNS already dropping the smoke right on top of Sicko. He's going to push, punish him as he pushes through the smoke and it's going to be a pretty hard one for Order to start to grind their way back into it, luckily. It just looks very difficult to breach this iron wall. This is the Cloud9 we were expecting earlier on on the CT side of Cache, and now we're starting to see it now. I'd like to see a tactical pause come out from Order to discuss what they need to do because their T side, like you were saying earlier, just looks too one-dimensional. Yeah, absolutely. It's just go, 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 and no sense of pacing, except when they go towards that inner's area. Tend to be just waiting around, seeing if anybody's going to go for a little bit of a push towards that SL area, well, towards T-Con. Maybe throw a few grenades and back towards Inners. And this is going to be a brawl here, Kev. Cloud9 getting very aggressive. Sicko punishes Skadoodle on the first entry. But there's still two at Inners right now. Tarek going to be playing anti-flash. FNS on the contact. And FNS, oh, he's going to spray it out too. But Leah's even better as well. The trade, the one-two combo. It's fast action. Look at and the fast, 
Look at the fast flank from Rush, Kev. Uh, but I think Alistair's expecting it, but Alistair can't pull down in time. So it's back down to a 2 on 2 Sicko tries to flick around, won't be able to land the shot in time. Flashbang from Liaz actually catches Sicko. I think it also catches Rush off, but a lot of damage has been done on these nades. Liaz now has to push in deep, but Automatic not finding the timing just yet, as Liaz has managed to sneak by, but Automatic just executes him. Now knows where Sicko is as well. Rush is coming in from the upper ramp. Cloud9, they managed to make this turn around as Rush just tapping the defuse once, playing around the edge of the smoke. Nothing Sicko can do. And Cloud9 will go up 8 to 2. Seem to have order all worked out at this point. This will be a perfect time for a bit of a tactical pause. You do have another gun round to go into off the back of that bomb plant and the, just the immense amount of loss bonus that order's able to have access to now that they've lost this many in a row. Cloud9, I mean, they've got. Plenty of money at this point. Don't seem to be running out at any point. And I feel like order at this point, they need to start mixing it up. You need to be taking that SL control off Cloud9 because it's giving them all the information, access to the flanks, and Cloud9's really exploiting that. As well as that Ivy, order need to start exploiting that as well. And I haven't really seen that too much. They, In most of their train games, they only ever send one person there as an extra little arm of attack or a distraction when they go for a bit of an outside push. That was a pretty quick tack pause and they seem to have decided on something in particular. So either they're going to take this one fairly slow and work it out as they go or they've got their mind on something in particular, Kev. I really hope that Order decides to start using Ivy a little bit more because that's one area of the map they haven't explored as much. They've mainly been focusing on T-Connector coming out fast SL. I just hope it's not the same case as this. Alistair, he's going to be fast out. They're going to be spotting him going over into the Olaf area. So you can see so much utility being used just to try to smoke him out. But he's still trying to push through the smoke grenade. Now the Ivy pressure is coming forward. But Automatic, he's there raiding with the AWP. Imagine decides to try to attack the A-bomb site instead. But... It is still the rifles of Cloud9 coming up superior alongside this double op setup. And there it is, another clean hold. Nothing that order is doing is working. And once again, I feel like they're going in too fast. They need to start slowing things down. They may feel like at this point that if they do start to slow things down, Cloud9s, they've got all the utility, they've got access to the double orb setup, they've got all the money in the world. So slow down may be the death of them as well, Kev. That's what they may be thinking because Gives Cloud9 so many opportunities to get those double orbs working, get those extra picks. If if Order put a foot out of place, Cloud9 will instantly stamp it. Oh, but an opening shot from Alistair as Tarek is trying to make his way into SL. This might be indicative of the fact that now Order have members inside SL, but FNS on the push up with his M4. Does a lot of damage to Liaz, but decides just to back off in case there are more members of Order ready to overwhelm him. So very well done from FNS. It was a timed push, needs to do it. And he backs out safely, dropping some utility as he goes. So for Cloud9, they're down a member. It's going to be more difficult for Skadoodle to get in the position that he does need. A lot of responsibility on Automatic as well to make sure that T-Connector and Ivy are going to be open. But Skadoodle with the AWP alongside of their Finesse. Their Finesse has been solid right now, as it's going to be three kills on his rifle. Doesn't seem to be a chink in this Cloud9 armor on the CT side. And coming back to, you know, what we were critical of Cloud9 for last map, we could not have been more uh, wrong about Order's position, uh, Order's, uh, how well they played, rather, on Cache. But it's the same thing for Order. You picked Cloud Nines, one of Cloud Nines' better maps on train, and it doesn't seem to have worked out for you so far. But they haven't had their CT side yet, and that's their better side for sure, Kev. They need to grind out a few more of these two rounds. Well, the problem that I'm finding with Order at the moment is that they're just not slowing things down enough. They're not allowing not allowing enough rope for Cloud9 to hang themselves if you, you know, if you understand what I'm talking about at this stage because they're just trying to challenge these angles right now. Liaz goes down on the extremity. There's no other control. It's not going to make Cloud9 nervous at this stage. Automatic has done very, very well holding onto Ivy as well as T-Connector. This will ask you to go to the B-bomb site and FNS has just been locking down B-bomb site pretty solidly with a rifle. Yeah, Alistair, bit of pressure on the T-Connector just shooting a couple bullets but three straight down lower here, Kev. Contact enough. Finally, a bit of a change up where they decide to jump straight down, but Skadoodle's here with the AWP and able to at least take down Imagine. It's going to buy a lot more time for the bomb plant to go down. Sicko not committing to the plant just yet. 
It's actually going to be Alistair dropping the bomb. Hats playing close in the smoke grenade. Just going to be dropping one closer and just trying to be utilizing it. Sicko doesn't know which angle to be looking at. The AWP, one above Hats. The CTs are going to be starting to come onto the bomb site. Tarek, he's great with the M4. It's all down to Hats, and I don't think he has enough teammates. In fact, they've all gone down. Kaima spray down automatic, trying to go for the kill. Eventually, there's going to be a defuse. For Cloud9, 11 to 2. This is a one sided slaughter right now. Nothing Order can do. And you can see the money in Cloud9. They can buy anything they want. Yep, and that's the problem with slowing down or going for a bit more of that Ivy control. If you give Skadoodle half a centimeter to shoot you, he will do it. Liaz goes down right at the start of that it round. Was oh, it was automatic, sorry. Yeah. And um, the double AWP once again, giving Cloud9 a lot of rewards, I would say. What order's going to do this round? Looks like fast towards Guinness again. They feel like they're constantly getting the bomb plants quickly, but once again, this SL control gained by Cloud9 is going to give them a fast flank. It's so much information. If Order even makes a peep, the pop flash is going to push FNS off, and it looks like Order's just going to set up their smokes and give this one more good try. Double SL setup coming out from Cloud9 as well, so they can be fast on the rotate if need be. They can get a lot of information. Smoke comes out from Skadoodle to make sure they can't jump through the inner ramp as easily. His AWP is going to be trained there. There's the first flashbang. Skadoodle is going to be blinded off the angle, but he decides to re-peak it. It's going to be rewarded with a kill on Alistair. FNS holding close. That is something that Order weren't able to do before, to take down this close rifler. So a 4 and 4 hats. Going to be close to the opponents, but can't find any more damage because once again it's Tarek. Two kills coming out on that fast flank. Skadoodle missing the off shot. Hats will be able to calibrate the shooting at the end of the day, but it's all down to a one on two. Now a one on one. Liaz up against Rush. The smoke's going to go on the plant. Rush, he's going to tap it once and look at the right position, but Liaz will get the spray down. That is the clutch that Order needed. Cloud9 a little bit upset they can't close it out, but they're still on the lead. 11 to 3, everything they can get. Yeah, they could not let Cloud9 get that round there, Order. I mean, once you're giving Cloud9 12 rounds, you give them the pistol and then they've got match point and they'll run away with it if you're unable to force buy it back. And man, this has been a hard T round for T half order. Don't even feel like we've been here for that long. And it's just Rush and Tarek automatic all firing up. FNS doing a great job of holding that inner's area. Skadoodle. He hasn't really had to do very much this game, to be honest as Order's been rushing out pretty quickly once again. Yep, and this is what we saw earlier on. This was shut down quite convincingly by the CTs before. Now Tarek's going to be boosted up by Skadoodle on the bomb site. You can see over the smoke, but not through the flashbangs. Eventually the flashbangs will fade. Tarek's going to jump up. No one has spotted him just yet. And Sicko, he's going to drop the bomb out in the open. Now the duels are happening back and forth. Alistair cannot find the trays. The T's are falling like flies right now. FNS may be a little bit too quick. It doesn't matter though, because the CTs are still just too strong on the A bomb site. 12-3, half for Cloud9. As we jump into Order's CT side, can they take this out or will it go into Inferno? We'll find out after the break.
Welcome back to I Am Sydney 2018. We're into map two of the series between Order as well as Cloud9. Cloud9, though, they dropped Cache earlier on, but they are in no position whatsoever to drop Train. They looked very comfortable on their CT side, 12 to 3. And Mitch, they're looking to close it out right now on their T side against Order. Yeah, definitely. But Order is definitely better one, one of their better sides on any map. You know, trains their map pick for a reason. Their T side might not have delivered as many of their fast strategies seem to just get shut down by Cloud9's strong individual plays just right and left. But they're definitely going to need to start it off with the pistol and then they can at least try to make things interesting. But it's looking pretty grim. Looking grim indeed, but Hats just going straight in with the CZ. Automatic deletes him. A bit of revenge maybe for Cash. Coming straight through for the pistol in order. This is a must-need win pistol, because if they don't, then Cloud9, they're in a prime position to close out this map in dominant fashion. Now, just a little bit of time before they do decide to commit to the B-bomb site. They're still lining up for the smokes and flashbangs. Yep, throwing those flashes in, and they're going to stream out onto the bomb site here. Just pushing down. This is something that we've seen a lot more from the pistols, but Alistair, a single one tap. Another one! Clean coming out from Alistair so far. This has severely dented the attack of Cloud9. Thirsty Kadoodle is able to pick up Emag at the same time. This is the back off signal for Cloud9 that is said to go into A instead through SL. Fast rotation down. Sicko. He is scared. There could be players at Ivy and Skadoodle with a double dink. Means that he won't be able to find any more action. Liaz hurried through the Molotov. He's going to be peeking straight into Skadoodle with the Glock. And this is going to be advantageous for Skadoodle at the end of the day. And Alistair cannot find anything more. It was good from him at the beginning. But Cloud9 managed to take the pistol on the back of a smart rotate. That might be all she wrote for order, unfortunately. Cloud9 not interested in losing another map to the underdog. They're here to take this series back. 13-3 up, pistol secured, and all things are on track for Inferno so far, Kev. The only thing that stands in their way is the force spy from Order. Scout and some CZs. Deagle onto Sicko, and Order can be so dangerous on these pistols, but Cloud9, four rifles and an up with some utility. Don't think they're taking any chances here. No, absolutely not, because they do not want to be dropping this round and allowing Order a false sense of security. Leia's just going to be staying hidden at E-Box for now. Automatic just going to be looking around, is suspecting that was one there. Alistair, though, with a scout, one shot out. Now, Cloud9 definitely knows it's going to be a force by Tarek with the Glil spray. There's a reason why you don't spray with the Glil. Oh. And there is a reason why you've got to be cautious, because that's a beautiful shot coming out from Alistair. At the same time, this happens. Cloud9 do decide to go into the B site. Sicko greets Rush with that one dig. Spots down FNS. Knows that the last two are going to be on the B site. Sicko body shotting down FNS. Skadoodle all left by himself. One and four. A little bit of space to relieve the uh, reload the Galil, but so many members he won't be able to find anything because Leah's Leah's on the high ground. So order two managed to get that force buy back. Look at the guns, they're all upgrading to Galils and AKs, all retained from the side of Cloud9. So that's going to give them a quick little boost to their economy here. Don't imagine Cloud9 will be forcing into this one. Probably just a single save, try to chip a few of these guns away, and just take the losers. Get, build up as much of that loser's bonus as they have so many rounds to play with it, but they're going to force. They want to end this one right now. Utility across the board with some CZs and armor. FNS must have something in particular in mind here. Oh, Automatic's got the AK-47, so it is still just a back and forth. They want to try to break the CT economy. They know they saved a lot of rifles forward, but they can definitely do damage, especially considering all the utility that has been forced up. It's now ringing out into T-Connector. Cloud9 slowing their progression through the halls, not making a single footstep. Order, they're not going to be in any close position to be able to tell if Cloud9's doing a contact in it. They can't hear a single footstep. Hatsy still got the Molotov, but he might be caught off guard if Cloud9 come in pretty quickly here. It's going to be down to Liaz and Hats. Are they going to rely on the AKs or are they going to be able to drop these incendiaries in time? Not a single peep has been heard in IV or in the T connector, and these CTs need to get close to rotating. Otherwise, this round's going to go very bad very quickly. Yeah, here comes the smoke grenades. Leaz is going to drop Incendiary Grenade, but he comes out just in time. Good trade from Automatic, a one-for-one. One. Incendiary Grenade, FNS trying to dive through it. Will go down as Hats has been waiting and watching the angles, but Automatic's been sharp from the AK-47 so far. Coming up close, Emag's just going to jump straight at his head, but Automatic comes out on top. It's three kills for Automatic so far. Alistair has dropped to the oil container, though. Knows that Tarek's in the mid-bomb site, but Automatic now on the ace. As Alistair coming ever so close and knows where the two targets are. Automatic is just a class above. Five kills for him. The ace, a critical ace as well for Cloud9. That's why you give him the hero AK-47 because it makes it work out. Just 
Unbelievable there. Everything seemed to be going right for Order, but Automatic, every single gunfight you give him, he just ripping off heads of Order right and left. Doesn't matter whether they're jumping over him or trying to peek him on a deep line. He's just hitting every single shot at the moment. He, he does not want Order to run away with this series. We're going to be pushing it straight to a third map. This is Order's last chance to prevent match point. And uh, they have a pretty lackluster buy to do so, Kev. Only slightly better than their previous one, but they managed to make the Scout and Pistols work out, so why not in this one? Especially the Cloud9 decides to take it a little bit too loosey-goosey. So they have slowed it down a lot. FNS going to try and make contact, but Hats has been waiting with the CZ. A free kill, backs off, very safe. No one from Order has been touched just yet, and this is where it starts getting perilous for Cloud9. They're split up. No one's in a position to trade each other out. They're not even closer into attacking either the bomb sites just yet, and the CTs can sit and just play out for days right now and just be confident that nothing is going to be happening. Down to a minute and six seconds now. Yep, and they've got full utility to work with. Wherever they want to take this bomb, they will be able to do it. Any smokes and molotovs they need. Tarek is going to push hats off this line, going to force out the smoke. That's going to mean no inners for a little bit, but they are going to be walking in that direction. However, I think it is Alistair up in that SL. He's got full control of it, which means plenty of information. If anybody makes a single step and quite a quick flank here. Seven, who's that? Liaz rotating in with the UMP. He's still got a Molotov, Kev. If he drops that before Cloud9 push, this could be absolutely huge. Well, that flashbang is great, but Haz is just going to try and slindle his way into the smoke. It's worked out perfectly, but he's running out into the own Molotov. Haz still managed to turn around to a lot of damage. Nevertheless, though, the AK is on the side of Rush and Tarek, able to nullify any further danger. Alistair can't spot the bomb planter just yet. Eventually, will be able to take down Automatic. Doesn't know that there's two more rifles. It's down to Sicko. Tarek was low. Rush is low as well, but Secret doesn't know where he's rotated to. A one-on-one -on -one right now. Dance around the bomb site. And it's a good plant for Rush as well. It's right out in the open. Sicko is going to be shot in the back a little bit. Does well to avoid most of the damage. Coming ever so closer. Sicko just has to stick it for the entire time. Does not have the kit. He's going to peek in the right oh. direction. He's going to be roared with the kill. Should not have enough time if he finds the bomb. He can't find it in the smoke. He eventually sticks it, but I don't know if there's enough time. He's lost it. Could not find the bomb in the smoke there. And you know what? He was able to pull it, pick up that round by hitting a couple nice scout shots on some low players. But let's be honest here. Order. If they're able to win another four spy round and they just keep losing these gun versus gun rounds against Cloud9, how many second chances can they really be given? At some point, they're bound to trip up and fall over completely. And exactly. maybe it's better to try not to use too much of your energy to bring back into a really unlikely map to win and just to move on to Inferno and, and keep yourselves going. Cloud9's looking dominant. I don't think they're going to let this one go to order, no matter how much effort they expend into it. So it might be a bit of a blessing in disguise there, Kev. Yeah, so Sicko just not able to find that bomb plant in time means that it was going to tick over. You could see the right grin on Tarek's face and afterwards knows that they probably shouldn't have won that. But you'll take what you get sometimes. So another force out of order coming into match point for Cloud9. Slow control once again. They do not want to be risking anything that order could be throwing at them they want this map over and done for Tarek on a bit of an expedition but expedition by himself but the rest of cloud nine are going to be crawling out of ivy and hats he's got plenty of information on inners here he should be able to shoulder check if anybody's close there imagine he's so close to the rest of cloud nine in the smoke it's going to be down to him alistair and sicko to hold off this Ivy push. Look at Hats. He's made his way through inners. All the information gained, but here comes the hit from Cloud9. Surely any second now, they're just going to keep throwing out these smokes. Tarek, though, will punish Hats for his aggression. And now out comes the Ivy pressure. They nearly line up for Alistair. He does well to flick to a headshot, but it's not enough. Liaz now stuck in SL. Knows there's one above him. Knows that they're trying to attack the A bomb site. Automatic. Going to be covering it off. And now the gunshot's made. Tarek decides to drop down. This, I think, is all it. Alistair with a scout trying his best. But just too many targets to find. Hasn't found any more tags. And they're just waiting for him. He crosses into Rush. And there it is. 16-4 victory.